Joining BYU Sports Nation now, once again, it's time for Jamming with Juddy. Jeff Judkins, former NBA star, head coach of the BYU women's basketball team. Jeff, how was Hawaii? It was awesome. It was a lot of fun. We we didn't have the greatest weather, you know, that you expect, but um, it was a lot better than anywhere else. You know, it was 78 degrees, 80 degrees, and <laughs> a little bit, little bit windy, but um, it was it was fun. We you know we got to relax and spend some time with uh, some of the players' families that that are from there, and uh, be able to go to the Polynesian Center and and uh, go you know just kind of just kind of relax and kind of work on some things that we need to work on. Did you get some shaved ice? You know, it was too crowded. I was going to go get some the day I, so you I went down there, so I didn't. I, I I missed out this year because there's a famous place. I can't remember the name of it, but um, it was pretty crowded, so we kind of passed. We're talking about BYU and Utah State tonight. This is a rivalry. Unlike football, basketball, it's just, I, I mean, football, now it's a rivalry, right? But basketball, it's been a rivalry. There's some good games. What was your experience as a player and coach playing in the spectrum, the challenge that is – those fans, that team. The Spectrum um, is one of the hardest places to play, and you're going to say, "Well, why? Why is that?" And the reason is that the fans and how their seating is right on top of you. It's not a gap. There's not a uh, you know a courtside seating area. It, they're right on top of you. That's number one. And number two is that it's it's the, when BYU and Utah go up there, it's the biggest game of the year for them. It's the Super Bowl, and and, and they make it that way. And I'm not saying that BYU-Utah doesn't make it important to beat them, but that's not the most important game. At least it wasn't when I played. Is Utah-BYU was the biggest game. So, um, But they, they go up there, and it's it's important, and and the fans get going, and they're loud. They have a lot of students, um, and it's a tough place to play. Now, for, for us, the time that I played, we used to, in the olden days, we used to play home and home. We'd play Utah State at our place. They'd play them up there. Now they don't do that anymore. But when I coached at Utah, it was, I mean, it was it was tough. It was tough up there. And I remember when BYU had the really good teams. They went up there, and Utah State gave them all, all they could have. So I'm sure tonight it'll be the, it'll be a tough game. I think I think BYU is better. Um, I think that they've played good on the road. They've they've shown that going to the Maui and playing so well. But uh, it'll be it'll be an interesting thing. Dave Rose said yesterday, it's fun for the fan bases and uh, for the players, but for the coaches, it's a little harder to play these games. He talked about recruiting and, and friendships within the state. How is it for you now as a coach when you play an in-state game like this? Would you agree with Dave? It's, it's, it's tough to play it's, it's a lot harder because we have nothing to gain. I mean, we lose to Utah State, and they blast that over every recruit, saying, we beat we beat you, we beat you. <laughs> uh, so that part of it. But here's the other side of the coin. Some ways I almost like the way it was when I played. I know it's harder. It's harder on the coach. It's tougher. But I think it's better for the fan. I think it's better for the, for the players. And that is, that's one less trip you have to go out somewhere and travel. It's less money. So if we had a home and home, think of thing if we did that, then be great. then we wouldn't be playing Northridge, and the boys wouldn't be playing Little Little Rock, Arkansas. Sisters of the poor. You know they wouldn't be playing that. They wouldn't be playing that game because they got. But uh, Dave's right. It's it's a lot of pressure, and sometimes you look at it and you weigh it and you say, is it worth it? Because, you know, this is a big game to Utah State. It's like when we played BYU Hawaii over there. It was the biggest game of the year for them. By far, and they played good, you know. And we, it was good for us. It was a great challenge, but you know, you're getting you're getting the best game from those guys. That's where I have so much respect for the top ranked teams like Kentucky and the men, and UConn and the women is that they're getting the best game every night. The best the teams giving their best effort. That'd be tough. It is. It's That'd hard. Be really tough. It's really hard. There's this low rumble. I I don't know how much of an actual idea this is or if anyone's going to do it of playing some kind of utah state championship in salt lake i don't know every year every whatever year around i don't know christmas or something with utah utah state byu maybe you get weaver state so then utah whatever involved utah valley I, what, you know, what would I, you think of that i would like that and it'd be play, amazing right like play where in the in, in any uh, energy solutions yeah, in salt lake. i think it'd be great i think it'd, i think it'd be a lot of fun i think it'd be you know great excitement maybe during christmas that might be a good time where 
We're not all traveling that far. You're and, not going to I, those elite tournaments somewhere else around yeah, Thanksgiving. Yeah, it, you know, it's getting hard. People don't realize with the West Coast Conference changing their league games so early. Like next year, we, we start the 17th of December. Are you what? serious? Yes. What? Wait, why? How do you get these games in? I mean, how do we get 11 games in in that period of time? Because we, we're not going to play during final week. Okay, and so you got to play eleven games before December, like tenth or eleventh. We have to play, yeah, because final week is in the end. That's correct. And then we're going to play our first league game next year after final week. You know, and so it's it's a tough thing, and maybe it'll get hmm. changed. I know that uh, that we're at BYU. We're trying to say, hey, we got final week. Can we? What, 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 so whatever. you're trying to create space for finals, more space for finals. Is that why? I, I well, I guess that's part of it, but. You know, back in back in the olden days, everybody played games in finals. At BYU, that's one thing we we try not to do. That we can't do that. They don't want us to do that. We don't schedule any games during final week. We need, mm. need to make sure that they have the opportunity to to do the best they can. Jamming with Juddy, Jeff Judkins on BYU Sports Nation. We are discussing rivalries within the state of Utah on the basketball level. And now uh, let's talk about the dynamic that you have to play in the Smith Fieldhouse with your team for the first time on Thursday, December 4th, against UNLV. It's a non-conference game. But why the switch from the Marriott Center to the Smith Fieldhouse for that game? Because we have a thing called the Christmas, Christmas Around, around the, the World. world. That then, that's another issue. So they take the whole week. So now we can't schedule any games there. And, and then the next week is mostly final week for everybody else but BYU. So now you can't schedule any games there. So it caused a lot of problems. So what we did this year is uh, we went, I, I went to my administrator and said, hey, we've got to play two games. We just went to Hawaii. I can't go on the road again and for school purposes. And uh, he said, well, let's see if we can play a game in the Smith Fieldhouse. So we scheduled for Thursday. We thought the volleyball team would host. I feel bad about that. They, they kind of got the, the run into that. They oh, probably yeah. should have host. But then we, we tagged along with the men's team, and we're playing in the Energy Solution. We're playing uh, Colorado State, which is a very, very good team. I mean, that might have, you know, maybe in the future, what, Jaron said, maybe we can play like Colorado State, both the men and women, and play them together and do something like that. But that's how we did it, and it's, it's exciting for us to, to be able to play in that facility. I'm kind of looking forward to the Smith. Um, it's, it's a little different. It will be more people will be on top of us, but. Uh, you know, it'll. I mean, I played there once, so we've. You know, we've had one opportunity. Well, you debunked something uh, that a lot of people ask me, and I know. I think I know the answer, but I want to hear what you say. Why doesn't the women's basketball team play in the Smith Fieldhouse every game? Um, the answer that I would say to it is, the Smith Fieldhouse is on campus, is the most used building on campus, mm. with PE classes, with volleyball with uh, ROTC, with, I mean, cheer, so many, yeah, practices cheer team, in there in the morning. gymnastics, it, it's being used constantly. And, you know, we're lucky enough that the men volleyball team lets us come in in these periods of time and take the court because they're not in season yet. They're kind enough to, to do that for us. But it's just so hard. It's it, the, the, I mean, if, if we came in there, then, that, then, then what are we going to practice? I mean, the court is being used. The court's being used. When I walk in the office at 8 o'clock, somebody's on there. And when I leave, it, there's somebody still on there. Because your so, offices are in the Smithfield. Yeah, it, it makes it hard. Not in the Yeah, it right. makes it hard. When do you get your shooting time? I mean, what the heck? <laughs> we don't get our shooting time. <laughs> I mean, that's, you yourself. Yeah, I don't get it. It's, it. I don't get the time. I mean, but that's the reason. Um, I think also the, the floor is designed for volleyball. The way they've they've done everything. There are dead it's, spots yeah, on the yeah. Baseline. There's not. There's not. There are. I mean, if we if we went there, we'd have to do a new floor. Mm -hmm. The arrangement would probably have to be a little different. Um, the other part of it is we have really nice lockers. You know, at the Marriott, we've 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 got them refinished. And so, why do you want to do that? And I, and I think the other thing, the Marriott is a beautiful facility. I Absolutely. mean, to, to for how old it is, and the shape that it's in, it's still. It's still one of the nicest arenas, period, in the country. 43 years old. Yeah, it, it, it amazes me that it's that old. It, you know, when I, I go in some of these newer buildings and I'm going, the Marriott's in better shape than, than, than this play. The floor of the Marriott, Haley Steve would have never played if it wasn't for that floor. 
hmm. the Marriott with their niece. It's it's a it's a great floor. Hmm. That's interesting. And, uh, you know, and just, it, I, I wish we could get it closer. I wish we could push a button and it all moves in closer for us so we get that. But uh, it's a great atmosphere. Jeff Judkins with us on BYU Sports Nation, breaking down college basketball inside the state of Utah and the dynamic of what it's like to play at the Marriott Center and the Smithfield House and balancing schedules. And certainly you uh, it seems like this is a stressful thing for you. How do you manage the stress of putting together a schedule uh, and just trying to find places to play games? It's, it's really hard. You know, you, you, that's a good question to ask Haley Steed. She's, she does my scheduling, and it's it's hard. It's It's trying to figure out all this stuff. And... Um, and then trying not to be on the road, you know, I mean, the education is an important part of BYU. People say, yeah, sure, it is. I mean, you know, my team had a 3.3 GPA average last year, and, you know, most of the girls graduate, they're on time, they try to do what they need to do, and so you're going on the road playing all these games, you're missing class, and that affects, and Ashley Garfield is trying to get a 4.0 and trying to do well in school, it, it affects that, so... It's hard, you know. Nice thing is we have, we have a great administration that that really lets us kind of do what we have to do. And sometimes we have to maybe they let us go somewhere and maybe play two games and pay a little more money to be able to do that. So it's it's challenging. Prediction for tonight: BYU Utah State. Uh, I think BYU will win the game. I think it'll be a tight game until about the last. Eight minutes of the game, I think BYU will run them, just wear them down. And I think, I think what you said, I think Haas, Haas could be the best scorer in the country. Period. Um, I told him the other day when I ran into, I says, "What a, what a great career you've had. I mean, every night you've, you've scored points, and people think it's easy. It isn't. They're all the goal, gunning for him. They are, they are. And there's some nights you get in foul trouble. There's some nights the shot isn't going. There's some nights that people they let you, they let him hold him where he can't cut and move." The guy does it every single night, yeah. and I think it's just his toughness. He's one of the toughest kids I've ever seen, and, he, and you know, I didn't see the game. Of course, the, their game in Maui we were playing, but I heard he, he carried him right at the end and missed a couple of shots that he normally makes. But, uh, San you Diego know, State, you're talking yeah. about? Well, no, the one they played Purdue. against Purdue. 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 I saw San Diego State. It was a great game. Great game. That was a great game. And uh, I think BYU is playing well right now. Come back. The hard part's coming back from Hawaii, and they proved this Saturday night they got a good team by playing so well. It's hard. That time frame's tough, but it'll be tough up there. They'll be on Haas. They'll be on him. And, uh, <laughs> you know, and, and, and it looks like Collingsworth's playing a lot better. Yeah. His, his knee's feeling better. So I think BYU will win by 12. Coach, congratulations on a couple of wins yourself for your Thank team you. in Hawaii, and uh, good luck against UNLV on Thursday in the Smithfield House. Yeah, 7 o'clock. We'd like to get some people there, so – you know, we can get that place rocking. It'd be nice. Loud and proud at the Smithfield House for BYU women's basketball as I take on the Rebels. Jeff Judkins with us. Great to have you, Coach. Thanks, Beaner.